Today we're talking about the Kive Audio Extressor plugin and whether or not it is the best compressor plugin for snare drum. And if you want to know the answer to that question, stick around after this introduction. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button, please subscribe and hit that notification bell, turn it into videos coming out. So without further ado, today we are talking about the Kive Audio Extressor plugin. So the Extressor is a emulation of the famous Distressor hardware, which is a compressor slash limiter. So in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the user interface of it, and then we are going to completely ignore every other instrument but snare drum, because in my opinion, this compressor slash limiter is best on either tracking or snare drum. Now, it is very versatile and could be used on pretty much any instrument, but in my workflow, I only use it on snare drum because I think it is the very best compressor for snare drum that exists in the history of compressors, okay? So that's what we're gonna test it out on in this video. So before we get to all that, I do wanna mention to check out audiosourcer.com and check out all the different services that I have to offer to you. So I have audio mixing, I have audio mastering, I also have audio editing for things that maybe you don't want to deal with. That could be vocal pitch correction, that could be time aligning drums, all kinds of different things. Um, I also do one-on-one -on -one remote teaching if you want to learn more about music production. And then also on the website, I do have a blog where I have a lot of stuff on there that I don't teach on the YouTube channel, and it is free to subscribe to, okay? So, also, now we're talking about the Kive Audio Extressor here, I do have a link in the description below where you can purchase it if you do end up liking it after this video. Now that it's all the way, let's get further into today's topic, and let's look at the user interface of the Kive Audio Extressor. All right, so here we are in Pro Tools and I have the Kive Audio Extressor plugin open here. So if you are familiar with the Destressor hardware or other plugin emulations, you could possibly skip over this section of the video. However, I will say that this plugin model here does have a different section across the bottom that does not exist in other emulations of the Destressor. So if you want to learn about it, feel free to continue on within this section of the video. Otherwise, just use the chapters and go to the listening portion of this video. So that being said, let's actually look at the top bar first here. So starting here at our presets, if you click that, go to factory presets, you'll see that we have banks here for all these different options here. So it's quite a bit of presets in here that you can look at here from drums to vocals to mix bus to guitars, quite a bit in here. We have our input level, we have our output level, you have oversampling up to 16x, you have our auto gain here, so that's gonna be makeup gain. You have a width knob here, and that's because I have this on a stereo track. We can actually bring this down to 0% and make this completely mono if we want to, and it goes all the way up to 150%, so we can make it a little extra wide if we want to. Uh, we have A, B here options, that's you know A being different settings we do in here against each other. We have undo and redo. And then for our gear option here, we have things like GUI, product info, and updates. So for the GUI, I have this at 125% now, so you can actually see this in a bigger view, which is nice, especially for making YouTube videos. So beneath the top bar is the meat and potatoes of this plugin. So as you can see, we have two sections right here, and that's because this is in stereo mode. So we have a left and a right, or it could be a mid and side, but we're not using it that way. So by default, as you can see, this is the ratio section here. It is set six to one. Now, it does go all the way up to nuke, which is a crazy limiter setting. So I should mention that this is not just a compressor, it is also a limiter. So whenever you hit 10 to one, that's when it becomes a limiter. Anything 10 to one and up is a limiter. Anything below that is a compressor, okay? Now, above that, we have our gain reduction LEDs. This is gonna show you how much gain reduction you're getting. You have a clipping LED and a THD LED. Next to that, this is our mode section here. A lot of cool stuff happens here. The first high pass here, this adds a 86 Hertz high pass at 6 dB octave, and this stops low frequency modulation. And then we have a bell beneath that. This pushes a six 
kilohertz bell to increase the compression sensitivity in the mids. And then we have a link to link the left and right channels. Now this SC button right here will kind of let you go between all these here and then get a combination of how you want them to work as you see I'm clicking it. Next to that we have our type button. Now for this high pass, this is going to be at 80 hertz, 18 dB octave, and it's meant to smooth and attenuate the lows. Now these DS2 and 3s here, this is actually for distortion. And what it does is it adds a harmonic in the compressed signal. Now the two here adds a second harmonic and the three adds a third harmonic. And these are really what makes this compressor cool and unique. So you're gonna see me using these when we actually get to mixing the snare, okay? Now the section over here to the right, this is pretty straightforward. We have our input gain, we have our attack, release and output gain. To get compression on this compressor here, we have to increase the input gain. That's how it works. Next to that, we have our stereo image link, which you probably want in most situations when you're using this in stereo mode. And then right here, we have an option to go between optical mode 10 and British mode. That's just kind of a different flavor with this here. So, you know, play with it and see what you like better. Now, at the bottom section here, this is where this is unique to other Distressor plugin emulations. Over here, this is our saturation knob. And you know, if you want more saturation, you simply just increase it. And then we have a warp knob. And what this does, is it adds lower mids to the signal, which is fantastic for working with a snare drum because that's gonna get you a lot of beef into the signal, okay? And then we have mix knobs for each one of these. We have a mix knob for the compression and we have a mix knob for saturation here. And then on the right hand side, this is just the right hand of the signal here. So this is the left and the right of these for saturation and warmth. And then in the middle here, this is our mode for this overall plugin. We could be a mono, stereo, or mid side. Okay? So that is pretty much everything you need to know about how this plugin works and what's inside of it. So let's actually hear this on a snare drum and I'll dial it in. All right, so as you can hear, that is a night and day difference when we have this applied to the snare drum as opposed to when it's bypassed. And what's interesting, as you can see, we're only using a two to one ratio. We're getting about five dBs of gain reduction, but I also have the mix comp pulled back. So we're really not using this for compression purposes at all. We're using it for coloration, adding thickness, and getting some attack out of the snare drum. So what's being used to achieve that, first of all, is setting this to distortion mode three. So we're adding that third harmonic, and then we're setting this switch over here to British mode. Now, this switch here does not exist on any other distressor emulation plugin I've ever seen. So it seems to be proprietary to the Kive audio model here. And I'm definitely loving this British mode. And then lastly down here, we're adding just a smidge of saturation and then we're adding some warmth down here in those lower mids to make the snare sound just a little bit extra beefier without having to add some EQ, okay? 
So all that together is what is achieving that sound you're hearing there. And I have to say, there really just isn't a compressor out there that sounds better than a distressor or a distressor emulated plugin on the snare drum. All right, so there you have it. That is the Kive Audio Extressor on snare drum, and it just sounds fantastic. There's no other way to put it. I have to say it is a step above the Slate FG Stress, which is the current distressor plugin emulation in my workflow right now, but it's going to be quickly replaced with this plugin. Um, I think the extra features in this plugin just put it over the top. You know, that warm knob is great because those are the tones, the you know frequencies that I'm looking for in a snare drum that I'm trying to add with EQ, and being able to get it in a compressor is just fantastic. So that's something I really love about it, okay? So again, if you guys like this plugin, I have a link in the description below where you can purchase it. And if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe so I'm making this content for you and hit that notification bell to know new videos coming out. And if you enjoyed this content, definitely check out my review slash tutorial on the Slate FG Stress. And with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.